The curve C has equation y equals x cubed plus 9x squared plus 27x plus 31. Part A showed that the curve C only has one stationary point. Find the coordinates of this point. So to find a stationary point, we know that we have to find dy by dx. This is equal to then differentiating x cubed, I get 3x squared. Differentiating 9x squared, I get plus 18x. Differentiating 27x, I get plus 27. Differentiating a constant, it disappears. Please at this point, do not divide this equation through by 3. This represents the gradient of the equation. It's only when we set up an equation with this expression on the right hand side can we do anything like divide it. So I want to now find the stationary points. I can do this because at a stationary point I know that the gradient dy by dx is equal to 0. So now I set up the equation 3x squared plus 18x plus 27 is equal to 0. It's at this point that we can start to manipulate the equation like dividing it in order to sol solve it. But in order to find a gradient, it must remain untouched in the form that I have written it up here at the moment. So dividing 3 by 3, I get the quadratic x squared plus 6x plus 9 equal to 0. When I look for factors of 9 that add to 6, I get x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 3 equal to 0. So therefore, I only have one solution, which is at x equals minus 3. So I have the one stationary point as required. And so finding the point itself, y equals minus 3 cubed plus 9 lots of 3 squared plus 27 lots of minus 3. Should put that as a minus 3 in there, plus 31. So just take care when evaluating this, we get y equals minus 27. I get 9 times 9, which is plus 81. I get 27 times minus 3, so I get minus 81, and I get plus 31. So the 81s cancel, and I get minus 27 plus 31, so y equals 4. And so one stationary point at x equals minus 3, y equals 4. Part B says verify that this stationary point is a point of inflection. Now generally speaking, what we would do is we would use the second derivative, so dy, d2y by dx squared, in order to classify the point. But as I know it's a point of inflection, I know that if I use d2y by dx squared, I am going to get a value which is zero, which is inconclusive. It doesn't mean it's a point of inflection, it just means it's inconclusive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to examine the gradient either side of the point x equals minus 3. So if I just take one point, one value to left and right of x, so I'm going to look at x equals minus 4, and I'm going to look at x equals minus 2. So if I evaluate dy by dx, uh, so in this second row here, we're going to put dy by dx, And underneath, I'm going to do a little bit of sketch. Now, really, to calculate dy by dx in this table here, it's going to be a little bit of a pain. So I'm just going to do it at the top. I know that the dy by dx here is going to be 0, and that will be represented by a flat line. So that's what the curve is going to look like there. So all I have to really do is look at x equals minus 4. So we get dy by dx equals 3 lots of minus 4 squared plus 18 lots of minus 4, plus 27. So dy by dx equals, I get 3 times 16, which is 48. I get 18 times minus 4, which is minus 72, plus 27. So dy by dx will be 
75 minus 72, which is 3. So I get that the gradient here is positive, and so I'm going to get a slope upwards like this. Looking at x equals minus 2, I'm expecting now that this would also have to be positive. So dy by dx equals 3 lots of minus 2 squared plus 18 lots of, let's make sure that's clear that I'm using 18, so plus 18 lots of minus 2 plus 27. So dy by dx equals minus 2 squared is 4, so I get 12, 3 times 4 is 12. I get minus 36, because 18 times minus 2 is minus 36, plus 27, uh, not 29, but 27. So dy by dx is equal to 39, take away 36, it's also equal to 3. So this gradient here is also positive. And therefore, since the gradient either side side of x equals 3, or x equals minus 3, uh, then it is a point of flexion. Okay, now part C wants us to sketch the graph of C, so I'm going to do that in a moment. Let's have a look at where we get the marks in this question first of all. So, starting off, if you have differentiated and you've got the correct expression 3x squared plus 18x plus 27 is equal uh, to dy by dx, you get a B1 standalone mark. If you put dy by dx equal to 0, you get a method mark. If you then work through and you find that x equals minus 3, you get an accuracy or an answer mark. And if you work through and you get y is equal to 4, you also get another answer mark. And these are correct answer only. Okay, so if you, if you have attempted to consider dy by dx at a value less than minus 3, you get a method mark. And so if you've shown, oh sorry, it's both at above minus 3 and below minus 3. And then if you have shown that both the gradients are the same, uh, like it's, are both positive, like we have here, then we get an answer mark. So really it's kind of tied in with your conclusion there. Now, the last thing that is left to do is to sketch this graph. Now, this graph gives us a nice idea because actually, part C, I'm going to get a curve that looks something like this. So just turning over, my, my stationary point is minus 3, 4. So what I'm going to do is just get myself a blank slide. My curve is going to look kind of like this. Here is the point, stationary point, minus 3, 4. So this means that it's in a negative x quadrant but in above the x axis. So here is my x axis and then my y axis is somewhere over here and so I can continue on down here. And so how is this marked? Well if you get something that resembles this with your point of inflection marked then you can have a graph mark. Okay, well I hope that all made sense and that you understood my solutions.